All right, and here's the Kuala Lumpur version of the video that I did in Singapore. If you haven't watched the Singapore one, go watch it. This is a motorcycle car park lineup, and we're just going to show you what there is. Um, the reason I'm going to show you is because I find it incredibly interesting, and there's just a big undermine scene here. And one thing, I'm going to walk down here, spot the odd one out. Keep looking. Keep looking. Okay, there's two odd ones out. The odd two out. Did you figure it out? If not, I won't leave you in suspense. Almost every single bike in Malaysia has alloy rims, not spokes. However, there's a couple here with spokes. So anyway, we'll go up and down this lineup. What you'll see is that, unlike Singapore, a lot of these are quite old. So we've got a uh, Jupiter, Yamaha Jupiter, which I think is a 115. Um, fuel injected, which is quite nice. That's a Legenda 110, basically the same bike that Andrew rode from, south, uh, from here in Kuala Lumpur through to uh, where did he take it to? We went to Bangkok. <coughs> Honda Airblade. Uh, these didn't live very long. They only were out for a few years and it was kind of like a undermount automatic, if you know what I mean. It wasn't a step through, so it's a twist and go 110. But it's got the, um, yeah, the fuel fills up there and it's got a tank under there and then you've got storage under the seat. So it was a pretty cool design. I actually used to ride one of those when I first moved to Thailand, but yeah, it's been a long time. RS150, RS150, same bike. Side by side, that's just the Repsol versa random standard livery, livery. Uh, what's this, a Yamaha Advantis, Advan, Advant. Anyway, it's a 125 twist and go. We've got an NMAX 155, uh, what is this? 125X, Ultimo, Boonsiu, Honda. Oh, it's a Wave 125X. I wanted to buy one of these when I first moved to Thailand because they were only like 2008, 2009, I think they were made. And I was there in 2013. So they were pretty new. But yeah, showing its age, that's for sure. Wave 100 is beast. I rode a Wave 100 from, uh, oh my God, it's got the same tires I used too. Uh, Maxxis Diamonds. Yeah, Maxxis Diamond. You can't get those in New Zealand, but I do have a pair still. Uh, we ship them back. So I've still got my tires that I bought here in, in Malaysia. Um, spoke wheels as well, which you see. Alloys, 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 alloys. One other spoked bike and then alloys, alloys, alloys. So, yeah, generally people chuck alloys on their bike because it's quite cheap to do so. But yeah, that's had a hard life. Uh, a CMC something, what's this, a Super Sport. Probably like a 200 or something, just a vertical engine. This thing down here, a Yamaha, I don't know. Uh, I've got an EX5, wonderful EX5, I like them. They've got a bit of a square rear end, which makes me quite excited. Uh, this thing here, I don't know, there's a guy hoiking behind me, so that's pretty gross. But you see that square rear end on the, yeah, I like it. Um, an E-Bonus 110, so that's a Sim, uh, Sang Yang Motor Company, Taiwanese brand. Legenda 115, so got the knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, doesn't have a knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, knee basket, knee basket. So if you don't have alloy rims, and you don't have a knee basket, who are you in, uh, in, in Malaysia? Uh, we're up to the agenda, so we've got the Honda Winner 150, so it's a, a dual overhead cam, fuel injected, six speed manual, they're pretty cool bikes. The Agenda 115, uh, that's the model after what Andrew had, because this one here also has Maxxis Diamond tyres on it, they must be pretty popular. They uh, were a 110 when Andrew got, or Andrew's one was a 110, and that's a 115, so it's a later model. 135 LC, Yamaha, don't know what this is. And then basically, yeah, it's one of those Chris Modanuses as well, which are pretty, uh, it's pretty worn out. But I had a pair of those shocks. I bought them back to New Zealand because I thought they looked so cool. But turns out all they really fit is these, or well, those, Modanus Chris, Chris Modanus, Spacey, Honda Spacey. That's pretty cool. Hey, man. And uh, the 135LC. Then the last one there is the RS150. So if all of that sounded like a giant bunch of gobbledygook, it kind of is. But yeah, I've got a big fascination for small underbone motorcycles and uh, the Malaysian way of knee baskets and alloy wheels is always fascinating to me because you jump over the border into Thailand, there's no knee baskets, which I don't understand because they're so convenient. Uh, people generally don't have top boxes or anything either, um, but you do occasionally see bikes with top boxes here and they're very easy to get top box uh, attachments for your bike. So yeah, see another bike. Alloy wheels and a knee basket. Just like clockwork. It's always 
faithful, just like clockwork. All these Malaysian bikes with their alloys and their knee baskets. I'm incredibly jealous. I do want to get a knee basket for my wave and ship it back from here, but I just, I don't really need one. I just kind of want one because I want one. You know what I mean? Here's another bike park and see if there's any two strokes in here. There we go, 125 ZR. So this thing here is a six speed manual, two stroke, uh, underbone. And they've just stopped making them a few years ago. I think 2018 was the last year or 2017. So they're actually going up in price if you can find a nice condition one. But yeah, there's not many nice condition ones around. Modernus Chris, 135 LC. Faithful EX5 delivery bike. So yeah, as you can see, once you've seen about 10 small bikes in Malaysia, you've kind of seen them all, but I really like how everyone makes it their own. Just like in New Zealand where I live, JDM cars are real cheap. Uh, and by that I don't mean Skylines or, or whatever, I'm talking about little Toyota Corollas and stuff. You can pick one up for, you know, 1,500 New Zealand dollars for your first car. And, you know, back in the day it was super common to modify them. It's kind of falling off now. Although there is a group in New Zealand called the Wounders who have uh, done one of those six spec custom jobs on a whole bunch of different cars, which I'll throw a photo in now, which is absolutely hilarious. Uh, and look, just before I end the video, 135, 135, Vario 150, Vario 150, 135 LC. The 135 LC is a super popular bike here. In Thailand, it's Honda all the way, generally. Yamaha is a, definitely has a smaller market share. But uh, yeah, that extra 10cc, I think, means a lot of people went for the 135 LCs when they came out. And here, you kind of ride a bike until it literally will not work anymore. It doesn't matter if it's not aesthetically pleasing or if it's got a scratch or if the speedo cover's broken. People just kind of do what they need to do, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm on the wrong side of the road to where compared to where I need to be. So I might wait for this traffic to go and then I'll jump over here. But uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of Small Bike Stuff. Malaysian small bikes are cool. Come to Malaysia and buy a small bike and ride it around the world. It's a great place to start. It really is a great place to start. Uh, cheap, you can get them in your name easily. And yeah, I mean, what other reasons do you need? <laughs> anyway, I'm outies. I'll see you next time on Small Bike Stuff. Don't forget to drop a comment below. If you've got anything you wanna say about those bikes, if I've said anything factually incorrect and you know better than me, tell me. How else am I gonna learn? <laughs> always love the interaction and I try to get back to everyone as soon as I can but while I'm traveling that won't be very quick anyway that's about it thanks for watching